Welcome back to another m- 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 micro sound bites. I'm Stratus. <laughs> no, I'm Gez. I love <laughs> that clip. <laughs> Uh, today we're going to be continuing on our series on having Mycroft gather information from the user after something has happened. So we're going to be using ask, yes, no today. It's a mm-hmm. relatively simple in terms of the input output that we feed it. And because of that, we're not actually going to show it in action because it's very similar to get response. So instead, we're just kind of kind of walk through the additions of code that we have to our ice cream skill so that you can kind of see how we built it. But there's not really much value in showing you, you know, Mycroft in action on this. So with that, I think we're going to jump over into an IDE instead of a terminal today and just kind of walk through the the code. Awesome. Let's do it. So here we have the skill that we've been, uh, been working on for a number of weeks, um, the ice cream shop skill. And we want to add this ask yes, no method. So to do that, we're going to process the payment for the ice cream that these people are buying and then ask whether they would like to provide a tip with that payment or not. We've done most of this already. So we'll just, just walk through it a little bit after we've spoken the dialogue and, and provided the ice cream back to the customer, we'll add a method to, to process the payment and then start to build that out. So to keep this simple, we're just going to have a fixed cost of $5. I'm going to tell the customer what the total bill is, and then we're going to ask them whether they would like to provide a tip. So for this, you know, it's very similar to the get response method and the other methods that we've looked at. We do self.askYesNo and provide a dialogue file and then a data object if we want to inject any dynamic data into that dialogue. Just like the get response, it's going to return a string and it's going to return one of four things. So if there's an affirmative response, it's going to reply with yes. It's going to return yes. This is not only if the user responds with yes, it's going to do any kind of affirmative response. So yes, sure, you know, all all those sorts of things, which to a human mean yes, but not just returning if the string equals Y-E-S. It's, it's for any type of uh, affirmative response. In that case, we can, we can add a tip in, thank the customer and, and move on. But if they say no, or, you know, a negative type response, then it will return the string NO. Uh, and so we can check for that. The third one uh, is, is it can return none. So if we ask this question and the customer doesn't respond at all, they're sitting on their phone, whatever, it's going to return none. So that, that tells us that no response, no utterance from the user was received. So then we can do what we like there. And then finally, if the user responds with something, but it's neither an affirmative nor a negative response. So they might say bananas <laughs> for whatever reason, and that will return the full utterance. And so we we often get questions about you know why is this the case like it seems quite weird if we're if we're asking a yes no question we should only really care if they say yes or no um, and people people don't often expect you know none or the full utterance the times where this might be useful you know imagine imagine the user uh, wants to add something else to their order and so they reply with, oh, actually, um, I'd like another ice cream, please, or you know, something like that. Uh, maybe they want to provide a custom tip amount. Who knows? There could be, could be incidences where you want to know what the user said, given that Mycroft doesn't believe that it was a yes or a no answer. And so you can use that there. Or you can not. You can just say, if they didn't say yes, I don't care about anything else. So you know, delete all this. That's fine too. Great. So now we have we have the tip amounts that we've uh, calculated for each, you know, each response type. We can add that to the to, to the cost to get a, a total, and then we'll probably report that back to the user. When we were kind of chatting about this, one of the things that I I kind of questioned was why are we using the ask yes no wrapper around get response when you could just simply use get response and do the checking because if you saw above we had an if statement if it was yes or if it was no or if it was none so that seemed to me to be no added value in having an ask yes no 
method. So I wondered if like, maybe you can explain a little bit why we don't just do this ourselves. Yeah, it, it's a question we get pretty regularly. And, and as I said, like it really is a, a wrapper around get response. Uh, the magic, the magic really comes when you hit these vocab match methods. And so, you know, you can, you can implement this in your own skill if you wanted to as well. But what, what we've seen is that generally people start with something really simple, like get the response and then check if the response is the string. Yes, then do something. Or even if the, if yes is in the response, then, then do something. But the, the limitations of this is that it's only going to work in English and it's going only going to match if the response actually contains the letters Y E S. And so it will actually match if someone says something like yesterday, that will also return as if it was an affirmative response, which probably shouldn't be the case. And so what voc match does is it, it uses the vocab file for yes. If there's one in the skill, it will use that vocab file, but otherwise it's going to use the one from Microsoft core, which has a whole range of vocab in a number of languages that indicate an affirmative response. So it might be yes, it might be sure, it might be ya, it might be betul for Indonesian. I don't, I don't think that one's actually in Microsoft core yet, but you know, it, it can work for a range of affirmative responses across languages, depending on what language the, the user's system is set to. And so it's just a much more robust way of, of checking whether things are affirmative or negative, you know, rather than using these direct sort of string comparisons, which can work in a limited range of circumstances, but you'll find you run into all sorts of issues when, once you actually start using that in the wild. And, and that's how this method has come about is, you know, we've seen a number of skills try and do this in, in a range of ways. And this is the way that we recommend that people do it. And so that's why we made it a method available on the skill class so that it really just makes it easier for you to do a, a, a very common thing and do it in a way that's consistent so that the users get a very consistent experience as well. Makes sense. So yeah, so yeah, it's a great question. Um, and, uh, as I said, you know, one that we get all the time. So good to cover. That was ask yes, no. And as we showed you, it was built on top of Git response, but in a very standardized way that Mycroft team recommends that you handle these sort of approaches. Really the big takeaway for me was the ask yes, no deals with the translation for you. And that is mm. really helpful when you're thinking about pushing out your skill to a wider audience. Uh, is there anything else that you want to talk about with ask yes, no? No, I think, uh, you know, there's some other ones coming along the, the pipeline where we're looking at um, potentially having a, an even simpler ask confirm method that, um, that only returns yes, no, potentially. Um, so if, if you think that would be useful, then be keen to hear about it in the comments. You know, we always want to make things simpler for, for Microsoft developers, but we also don't want to add things just for the sake of adding them. So um, uh, let us know what you think is going to be helpful uh, and keep telling us yeah, what, what other videos you think would be helpful to, to help you get across concepts. We've, um, we've received a few suggestions at the moment and, um, and we're looking at those for future videos. So yeah, keep it up. Thanks. And I guess uh, with that, I will wrap this, this episode up and we'll say until next time. Until next time. Ciao. Bye.